Good morning, folks. This is a scene from the upcoming Chapter 3 of Star Water. After reviewing the startling abundance of water in our solar system, the water factories that stars have recently been revealed to be, it's now time to investigate the mega-delivery possibilities via not-so-pleasant means. Rogue planet on a collision course with an Oort cloud. Global climate report for October came out. Extremes take the cake. Look at ice mountain heat in the northern events contrasting with that killer early snowstorm out west in the U.S., we already know next month we'll have focus on the U.S. extremes. Across the world, we see that again with record high ice in Antarctica, while Australia sees record heat. Makes very little sense. And it's almost easy to forget the record Indian cyclone after what Haiyan broke in November. The storms were truly sisters in strength. Giving an example here is Takluban. Red plant thermals on Aster virtually gone in the aftermath of Haiyan. Anyway, the October report is linked below and you are encouraged to check it out. Lots of good visuals accompanying the actual reports, including precip here. Coming back to India where the next cyclonic storm is about to have its welcome party. Hope the locals are not taking this one lightly either. It's a coming. Speaking of rain, flash flood potential over the last day here in the most affected zones. Got Melissa out in the Atlantic, subtropical, not going to gain any strength and she's headed north. I've got IntelliCast pulled up here showing the 24-hour temperature delta. Look at these shifts over a 24-hour period. For those newer to the channel, this happens when a powerful low-pressure cell is laterally next to a high-pressure system which spins clockwise, opposite to the counterclockwise low, but where they meet in the middle, both are pulling up, north. And while the high pushes out, the low is somewhat sucking in, so that curve gets tiny up at the top and kind of cut off from the frame here, but you see how warm and cold are smashed together. That's how you get big weather. Normally I make you go find Bruce Gary's images on his site, but I just can't ignore this one. Beautiful. Showing side jets to the comet. As always, their site is linked below and will continue to be until the comet is gone. Something interesting. Yesterday's X-Class solar flare was not Earth-directed, it was Ison-directed. The flare energy and CME would have already interacted with the comet as of now. It's now close enough that CMEs will hit same day they erupt. And coming through the wires, from the world's top experts on the stuff, it appears Ison has had yet another major outburst. This is the new image of the comet, and wow. FYI, that makes the six-tailed beast, Ison, and Comet Linear all going bonkers in the inner system. Cosmic ray jolts, evident in the neutron monitor as we appeared to take a minor interplanetary shock last night. I expected the KP to react if it continued, but we did level off in the metrics and the KP turned right around to hit the snooze button. Even the sensitive electron flux didn't think much of those readings, so we'll come to flaring. Nothing big since that X-flare yesterday, the sunspots are fewer but sizable. The incoming spot needs some development around him. Meanwhile, one last look here at the departing groups including the X-flare producer on the limb. Up north, 11899. Still not dangerous or the biggest ever, but still the best dang example of helicity, the inner umbral vortex, beta meshing, that humans have ever seen. And remember, we showed Lockheed Martin's planned iris observations did not include that spot. Well, it appears they have changed their mind. More shots of that spot in a moment, but we'll end with the maintained coronal hole power complementing the space weather to give a localized uptick in the area near the Mariana Islands down to Antarctica. The southern bit of the globe took that near eight pointer days ago. We might not have seen the end. Shots of our star to close, starting with the super spot. Eyes open, no fear, it's 6.20 a.m. Eastern time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.